So, so hello everyone. Like, I don't know where to look, you know, like it's kind of weird. Uh, but so hello everyone. So I'm one of the co-founders of IOTA. And so, because many of you probably have not heard about IOTA before, I'll give you a quick introduction of what IOTA is, like why we created it. And then I'll go into some of the use cases. And afterwards, Dave and Harma will, will present. I think you can now. Okay. Mm you're the host, so you should yeah. have the rights to do such a thing. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we are live now. Do it. Perfect. So cool. So, so connecting our world today and tomorrow. So why did we create IOTA, right? So IOTA comes from this big vision of the economy of things, right? So our vision is that the Internet of Things is not just about connecting machines, but it's also about enabling machines to exchange value, right? So the future is not just about connectivity, but really about having machines create our own economy. And what this means concretely in, in our vision is that the machine has a wallet. And with this wallet, the machine is actually able to transact money and is able, actually able to transact with another machine to get services or to get other resources. So what this means concretely is that in our vision, for example, a machine that has an access resource, like for example, um, computation or bandwidth or electricity is able to sell this resource on demand to another machine. And through that, you obviously have this load balancing of resources and resources get more efficiently distributed and get more efficiently utilized in this network. And what's key to this, this, this vision is obviously you want to give machine their autonomy, this autonomy to transact on their own behalf, right? So you don't want to have a bank, that, a machine bank, right? You don't want to connect the machine to a bank and then the bank does the transaction for the machine, but you actually want to enable machine to machine payments. And the way to achieve this is obviously through a distributed ledger. Because what the distributed ledger is in a, uh, enables us three things. First of all, we really have this trust in data, right? So I can put data into a distributed ledger and it becomes immutable. And more, more on, on top of that, it also becomes verifiable. That means I have this end-to-end -end verifiability because now through this distributed ledger, I, I can input data and then I can independently verify it. And that is a huge, huge gain if I want to uh, enable new use cases in this machine economy. And the second one is real-time transactions, right? Like I said before, we want to enable micropayments, right? So that machines can transact with each other and do this, all of this in real time. What's important for, for this machine economy vision is that it's without any fees, because only if you have no transaction fees, you can actually achieve micropayments. And, and through that, you really have this fine granularity in, in pricing your services and pricing your resources, because in the future, you might just want to sell a small data packet, right? Like, you would just want to sell what is the current temperature in, in my house in Berlin, right? And you can only do that through micropayments without transaction fees. And the third component to enable this mach uh, machine economy vision is really smart business models. So concretely smart contracts. So how can you automate a certain process in a trustless fashion? And obviously, as you guys know, uh, distributed ledgers are really there to either improve existing processes, making it more efficient, uh, cost efficient and faster or, or also autonomous, or to uh, uh, create new processes, meaning new business models that were not possible before. And exactly to enable this vision, we created the IOTA Tangle. And so IOTA was founded in 2015 by four people. And, and what we've created is, is a new structure that is no longer based on the blockchain. So we always say that it's a blockchain without the blocks and without the chain because it use, utilizes this new structure, which, which is called a DAG, a directed acyclic graph. That means we no longer have any miners that validate transactions, but uh, uh, validation is an intrinsic component of the protocol. That means if I make a transaction, I also validate transactions. And the beauty of the system is that it's very scalable and I no longer have any transaction fees. And obviously, our big vision is, is to overcome the limitations of blockchain. <clears throat> so uh, it's, it's 2019, it's the start of 2019, and there's still a lot more work to do, right? So we have this big vision, we have this technology, but at the end of the day, we and other projects still have to cross the chasm. So 2017 was the year where, where everything went kind of uh, berserk, or 2018 was the year where everyone went kind of berserk, right? It, it was like inflated egos inflating the prices and also the expectations. But, but this year is a lot more productive and it is, is a lot more focused, where a few projects really have to stem out and prove their merit. 
And we as, as a foundation, we as an ecosystem want to prove our merit and actually show that we can cross this chasm and actually be production ready. And the way that we intend to achieve this is through three things, right? First of all, it's technology. We, we need to have a base layer, a base protocol that is actually ready for the adoption. We always have these big visions of, of what, the, what the potential is, but we are not really ready yet as, as, as base technology. All blockchain technologies are still proof of concept, right? And we need to be able to show that they're ready for, 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 for these highly scalable uh, environments. And this is obviously why, where we put a lot of focus on research and development to, to really make sure that this new DAG structure that we create is actually ready. The second component is really the governance. So this is where we've created the IOTA Foundation, which is a nonprofit foundation in Germany, which, which is really there to further develop the protocol, but to also help to foster and, and build up the ecosystem. And the third component is probably the most important one is the ecosystem, where we have people that innovate on top of our technology. So we always talk about permissionless ecosystems. So we just provide the tools and the framework, but the community is there to actually innovate and build on top of that, which is why this hackathon is so exciting because it's a true, true example of how to innovate together in an ecosystem. So to quickly uh, describe the foundation to you, uh, so we are close to 90 people right now, and, and we are based in Berlin. We are very decentralized, like the technologies we, we, we create, and, and we are in more than 15 countries right now. And our focus is, as I said, is on research and development, but also on this ecosystem building. And the ecosystem is, is, is one of the most important component when it comes to the adoption. So for one, we work with big co companies and, and, and governments, but we also have a very um, large and active community that, that is building in this permissionless environment. And this is why the, the Odyssey Hackathon is quite exciting and why, why we are quite excited to participate there. So Dave will give you guys more in, information afterwards on what kind of uh, things we will provide for the hackathon. But I think it's, it's really exciting to see how this will play out because I think this is the largest hackathon. I, I'm not sure how many people are actually participating, but I guess it's quite a lot. But it will be very exciting to see what kind of ideas will come out of this, 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 this hackathon. Because hackathons are probably the best up, uh, way to actually innovate together because for one, they're fun and competitive, but for another, they're really this, this innovation test bed where you can start hacking around with the Raspberry Pi and just build a new, completely new idea that others couldn't imagine. And especially for us as founders and for us as a foundation, it's very interesting to, and, and very important to support these projects because we, we as the creators, even though we have the best knowledge, we cannot imagine everything, right? So this is why you need to have this large community and this large ecosystem that can imagine further. And only by coming together, we can actually mash together a few ideas and then create it and see how it works and see what doesn't work and then bring it to life. And just to give you guys some, some inspiration, I want you to, to mention a few projects so, so you can also see what is possible. So uh, the, the beautiful thing about IOTA is, is that it's really applicable in all of the industries. So it's, it's uh, applicable in mobility, like smart mobility, mobility as a service is applicable in smart energy where it can do peer-to-peer uh, -peer energy trading, e-health, supply chain, industrial IT, where it can have secure audit trails and so on and so forth. A good example is, for example, uh, Bytes.io, which is pay for bandwidth on demand. So that think, imagine having a gateway, and instead of having a subscription service to your, to your telco provider, you are actually, a, act, actually just paying per byte that you send through the gateway. And this is beautifully done with, with micropayments. And, and exactly this is where IoT will go to, where it's more an on-demand uh, uh, services instead of subscription services. And obviously, connectivity is the most important one. And making it on demand really makes it possible for more machines to actually connect. Another great example is packed care, which is security in healthcare, basically being able to secure your healthcare data and being able to share it with third parties. Like I said before, the beauty of the thing is that you can encrypt the data and then share this data with third parties, making it verifiable and also proving the authenticity. And this, this basic principle of an audit trail can also be applied to manufacturing, right? Where you have a machine and you want to know what, what, what value chain did they 
product go through in a factory and so on and so forth. And then you can actually share this data or supply chain is also a good example. So you can know where the good went through in the entire supply chain and you can share this data with other parties and they can then verify it. Another great example is TopoCare where, where it's production on, on demand, right? So you only pay per usage. So you use the machine and, and you don't buy it, but you only pay for, for the usage, meaning uh, pay per second that you utilize it or pay per centimeter that you get off the strip. And everything is verifiable and everything is trustless because as soon as the machine no longer gets the payment, the machine starts uh, stops, right? And this is a completely radical shift in business models, as you can see today. Or another fun project, if you want to go go a little bit further, is is tango sheep, right? So you can pay the sheep on demand and 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 give it uh, uh, food. Obviously, I don't expect you guys to have a sheep at the hackathon, but it's just like inspiration, right? It's permissionless innovation. We just provide the base protocol, and you can then uh, let your imagination run wild. So yeah, this, this was my quick presentation. So Dave will provide you guys with more information afterwards on 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 what. IOTA means for developers, what kind of use cases you can develop, and also the support that you can expect from us. So are we doing Q&As or, or, or are we short on time? Uh, we are actually a bit short on time, but I guess we have time for a few questions, like one or two questions. Uh, and we have a wonderful, beautiful red catch box, so uh, we don't see the blood if I ever uh, really hurt someone. Uh, who has a question? Can you hold the catch box? Uh. Sorry, um, I heard you use the word encryption, so I think that's uh, a little bit confusing for me. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have a protocol which is called masked authenticated messaging. And basically, what it allows you to do is have an encrypted uh, uh, data stream on the Tango. So the data is encrypted on the device, and this encrypted data is then input into the transaction, and the transaction then goes into the Tango. And the beautiful thing here is that only you can read the data or the parties that you give access to the data to, uh, the, uh, the, the key to, right? So only certain authorized parties can read the data. So this means that IOTA is not just there to store the hashes of a data, but can store a data set itself. Good, yeah, next question. Someone in the back maybe, or on the other side? No, no question? Well, uh, cool. if you're too shy, uh, there is his mail here. Uh, so don't hesitate, I guess, to contact him. Uh, are you all fine, Dom? Do you have something else maybe to share before we uh, end this uh, meeting? No, I think that sounds, that sounds all really good. I mean, Dave will provide you more information and, and, and we'll, we'll see how we, we will participate at the hackathon itself and, and see what comes out of it. Very, very excited about that. Wonderful then. Well, uh, you can give a round of applause to Dom before we end this meeting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I leave you finish this meeting uh, and, oh, you can even uh, say bye uh, like this. I'll, I'll get some coffee. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs>